So how shocking was this announcement today about Charles? It was incredibly shocking. The last we heard, Charles was undergoing a minor procedure for an enlarged prostate that was deemed to be so simple to get through that he felt happy and comfortable to share it with the world, which is not something that Charles is used to doing when it comes to his private medical matters. So the fact that he's now been diagnosed with cancer, which actually has nothing to do with his prostate, is a really surprising piece of information and one that has definitely raised major concerns among the British public and around uh, among royal fans the world over. So break it down, what exactly do we know right now? What we know is that Charles was diagnosed with cancer, which was spotted while he was undergoing that treatment for an enlarged prostate. However, the palace has made very clear that his cancer is not connected to his prostate. We understand that he is going undergoing outpatient treatment in London, that he immediately traveled from Sandringham to London, where he is going a series of different treatments, which suggests, although we don't yet know, that he is undergoing some form of cancer treatment like chemotherapy or radiation. We know that he has been advised by doctors to cease all public facing engagements and duties, but that he plans to continue all of his behind the scenes work and that includes things like meetings, which he will likely do on Zoom, any paperwork and things like that. So by no means is the monarchy shutting down as a result of this news. However, it is obviously coming at a bit of a rough time for the royal family in general. Not only have they had Charles's health issues regarding his prostate, but we've also just come off the back of the news about Kate Middleton, who underwent such a serious procedure that she's having to take weeks away from the public eye. Why do you think they're keeping the type of cancer private? You know, it could be for all manner of reasons that they've decided to not yet share the type of cancer that Charles has been diagnosed with. I think one of the key reasons is likely that they don't want members of the public making assumptions. As soon as you say he's got this type of cancer or that type of cancer, people will start throwing around statistics about survival, what his likelihood of you know, getting a terminal diagnosis is. And that's not something that the palace wants to be dealing with at a time when their main priority is getting Charles through his treatment plan and ensuring that he comes out on the other side of it in the best possible shape that he can. If he's surrounded by headlines saying, Charles diagnosed with rare cancer that gives him a 2% chance of survival, that's not exactly going to do a great deal to you know, motivate him and maintain his positive attitude. I think they've also made the decision because they want Charles to be able to take ownership of his diagnosis. As I said, he's not someone who really enjoys sharing very private details about his life, but I think that he is very much aware, especially at the age that he is, that speaking about health issues can do a great amount to encourage others to take active responsibility for their health. That's why he chose to speak out about his enlarged prostate. It's why he shared his cancer diagnosis now. And I think that when the time comes, he may well open up in more detail from a personal point of view about what he went through, what his diagnosis entailed, and how other people can take steps to ensure that they catch their cancer early. And they're also not sharing the stage of the cancer. Um, you kind of already answered this, but how is that in particular uh, maybe a good decision? Again, I think it's all about not raising panic levels. They've done a really, really Im you know, important job with the statement that they issued in making clear that Charles remains very positive, that he is excited to resume his duties. Everything that they talked about in the statement was about looking to the future, however far away that may be. There was no kind of doom and gloom and calamity about the statement that they issued. Had they included the stage of the cancer, had they included the type of cancer, again, it just leaves more room for speculation, for analysis of statistics, and I think that that's something they don't want right now. The royal family is going through a rough patch. Kate is currently unavailable to do you know, public engagement. She's recovering from her own surgical procedure. Although she's no longer a senior working royal, the Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson, also recently opened up about a cancer diagnosis. Charles's cancer is just the latest in a line of really difficult times for the royals, and they don't want it to become more of a hoopla, as it were, than it absolutely has to be. 
In terms of the king's duties, what will he and what won't he be taking on during this time? So he will be taking on things like meetings. He has regular meetings with the prime minister. He might do those via Zoom, I think, rather than, you know, kind of have people actually coming into his orbit when he's perhaps a little bit more compromised immunity wise. He'll also be completing paperwork. He'll be signing off on different things. The reality is these days the monarch doesn't have a huge amount of power. So the country is by no means going to shut down. Charles takes on more of an advisory role in his position as king, and he will continue to do that. The thing that we will see him stepping away from are the public facing duties. So you won't see him out and about, you won't see him in front of the cameras, you won't see him, you know, cutting giant ribbons with scissors, but he will continue to do as much of the behind the scenes work as he possibly can, even while he continues to undergo treatment. Is it true that he personally told William and Harry the news? We do understand that Charles made the decision to break the news of his diagnosis to William and Harry personally, which I think was the absolute right thing to do. Look, relations between Charles and Harry are by no means happy, joyful, merry, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, it's times like this when you really learn to see what's important and what isn't. Harry knows how much of a tough time his family has gone through. He knows how much of a fighter his father is. And I think that Harry, out of all the times that the royal family has really struggled, will see this one not as an opportunity to aid the monarch, but as an opportunity to be a dutiful son who is going to the aid of a father who needs a little bit more support right now. And what will we be seeing from Harry right now? Will he be going to visit? I think absolutely we can expect Harry to be arranging a visit. Now, as any parent of two young children knows, managing the logistics of that is not the easiest thing in the world. I'm sure that Harry would absolutely love for Archie, Lilibet and Meghan to go with him, but it would make most sense to me in this point in time that Harry travels alone, especially while his father is perhaps not feeling his best. No parent, no grandparent really wants their children or grandchildren to see them when they aren't feeling, you know, in tip top shape, when they're perhaps going through some kind of treatment that might be really taking a physical toll on them. So I think what will hopefully happen is that Harry will go pay his father a visit, help him through at least the initial stages of his treatment, and then Harry can take Lilibet and Archie to visit their grandfather a little bit further down the line when we know exactly how his treatment has panned out. And how big of a deal is it timing-wise that uh, Kate is recovering from her own surgery? You know, this whole incident, whether it's Kate's health scare, whether it's Charles's enlarged prostate and now his cancer diagnosis, it's really highlighted just how slimmed down the monarchy has become both out of choice and happenstance. Now, we knew from the moment that Charles ascended to the throne that he was going to try and cut back on the number of senior working royals who were really part of that inner circle of, you know, royal family employees, as it were. However, in addition to that, you've also seen the loss of several senior royals because of other events and circumstances. So Prince Andrew has obviously been cut out of that inner royal circle because of his involvement in the Epstein scandal. Prince Harry and Meghan chose to remove themselves from that inner circle when they made the decision to move to the US and quit their positions as senior working royals. So you're really only left with a very small handful of people who can carry out official royal duties. You've got Charles, who is obviously now no longer able to do so in public. Kate, who we understand will be taking time off until after Easter before she feels able to return to those public facing engagements. Now you've got Prince William. However, he's obviously not going to want to spend too much time away from his wife as she continues to recover. So he's the one who's in a real bind here. He's got the weight of the monarchy resting on his shoulders, wanting to support his father, also trying to support his wife as she continues to recover, and then parenting their three children. That's a really rough spot for William to be in, but I have no doubt that he will handle it with stoicism and grace as he always does. And what do we know about Kate right now and how she's doing? So we understand that everything went very well for Kate as far as her surgical procedure was concerned. She was released per the timeline that the palace gave before she underwent that procedure. And we now know that she is doing well and recovering at home quietly and with plenty of rest. 
Her parents, Michael and Carol, have obviously been there to support her through everything and to provide essential support to William and their children. No parent, when they're going through a kind of health crisis of this kind, can really manage to juggle every single little thing. And I think having Grandpa Michael and Grandma Carol there will have been invaluable to Kate and William as they try and navigate through this time. And how should the royals deal with both Charles and Kate being out of commission? What is their overall strategy? You know, I think what they're going to be doing right now is tallying up, if you will, all of the royal engagements that both Kate and Charles were meant to be taking part in in the coming months. They'll be ranking them by priority, both priority in terms of their public significance and importance, but also in terms of their priority to individual royal family members. It may well be that Kate has several causes very close to her heart that she would hate to see, you know, miss out on a royal member being there. But then you've also got Prince Edward, you've got Princess Anne, you've got Sophie Wessex. There are other people waiting in the wings who can step up and take on those duties. Princess Anne in particular is a warrior when it comes to these things. Oftentimes she is one of the royal family members who completes the most royal engagements in a year. We just don't really realize that because she's doing it so quietly and behind the scenes but I absolutely would expect her to fill in if and when she's needed. And she's always been the kind of royal family member who will be there as soon as she's called upon. And now with these two health situations ongoing, would you say that the royals are in crisis? I don't think that crisis is the right word to use right now. I would say that they are going through a very turbulent and difficult time. I think honestly, the way that the royal family as a whole handles these two medical events will indicate their strength or their weakness. I think if they are able to band together, if Harry is able to go across to the UK and see his father, if those other royal family members that I mentioned are able to step up and ensure that things continue to run seamlessly, then I think it will really show how strong the royal family is as a unit. This is also a wonderful opportunity for William, as terrible as that might sound, to kind of step up and prove just how ready he is to take on the role of monarch as and when that time comes. Now, I'm not suggesting for a second that that will be tomorrow, next week, even next year, but I think that these events really offer other members of the royal family the opportunity to shine. And for someone like William, all it will do is help to increase the level of public confidence that's held in him.